I want to make shawarma become the new burger. I love to be able to see shawarma stores in every corner like you see burger stores. Yeah, I'm a dreamer and I can't stop dreaming. My name is Tony Titus. I'm the founder of Contois Libanais Group. We ha currently have 27 restaurants in London, all over the UK. I think I started my working life when I was, in fact, younger. I was about eight years old. Uh, when I was living back home in Algeria, a small town called Tizuzu, across the road from my house uh, is football uh, stadium. So whenever they play, it's a, it's a salon. I used to sell sandwiches and I used to sell lemonades and my mom was always there to help me. So I think, I guess that's how really when I started, it felt like as if I had a, a restaurant. I guess when I came to London, I didn't come to stay. For me, it was a holiday for like two, three weeks. I remember having 70 pounds in my pockets. The first night we slept in Victoria Station, it really felt like a, an amazing experience, an amazing adventure. At the time, I thought, I'm just gonna make some money, as much money as I can, go back home, go to university. And, but um, eventually, when it was time to go back, I called my mom, I said, Mom, I really wanna stay, you know. Muslim mothers, they start crying on the phone give you all that drama, you are the oldest. They were scared, they were worried. I had no contacts, no money. I didn't speak the language. Eventually, my mom accepted it. She gave me her blessing, my dad accepted it. Uh, in four and a half years, I was working 80 to 90 hours a week. Every single morning, when I wake up, I said, God, I want to see, I, I want to open my restaurant. And I used to say to myself, I'd be the happiest man in the world. And to be very honest, the first day I opened that restaurant, I forgot about that dream because I achieved it. And then I thought about other dreams. And that's how eventually I wanted to open more restaurants. Yeah, I For me, I always say there is no rules when you make food. Make food with love. Do it however you like. If you like to add garlic on, uh, on a dish, chili, onion, rice, couscous, there's no borders. Cauliflower, I used to eat it as a child. My mom used to make it for me in a different ways. The cauliflower is cut in small pieces and I try to make it look a real cauliflower shape. I can have some salt, a little bit of lemon, just a tiny bit. So I have my tahina. So I'm going to just put some garlic a little bit everywhere and then start the fun part. We start dressing a little bit of the dish. Red chili, a little bit everywhere. I put a little bit of paprika, some olive oil, I can add a little bit of parsley. Now you have a beautiful cauliflower and tahina dish. The dish should be yours. Make it however you like, but I'm very proud of mine. At the end of the day, a restaurant is a place where people go to eat. A restaurant has been invented and created for travelers but it's not what it is anymore. Now it's about an experience. Food is one very important part of it, but there's all the other elements of the experience. The design is very, very important. I want anyone that walks into our door as if he landed somewhere in Marrakesh, in Beirut, in Istanbul, in uh, Cairo. The relationship between food and culture, it's marriage. Although the food is different from country to country in the Middle East, but one thing we have back whether it's in Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, is the culture. The culture, the family value, the hospitality, the generosity, all that is the same. It's the same foundation. You will all, never walk away from an Arabic table hungry.
that moment, I landed in London and it did not feel like I was in a foreign country. You don't need to know anyone to feel like you know everyone because you get people from all over the world, from Africa, Southern Europe, Chinese, Indian, Brazilians. It's a melting pot. I'm Algerian, I'm very proud to be. However, my heart is here. I actually don't have a typical day. I wake up, grab my coffee, always the gym. The gym is very important in my head to remove all the stress. Come back, there's always new things coming up, solving uh, small problems, meeting colleagues, meeting suppliers, but it's also talking to the team. The team is very, very important uh, because obviously the team is, is the one that runs a, new, a business. I can meet a designer, I can meet an agent, and I like to help a younger men or women that want to set up a business or they have a certain ambition or just pick my, my brain as an experience. Because all I do is I share, my, I share my story and my experience. And if I can help people by that, and I do that. Uh, because I remember when I was younger, I did not have that confidence. There's other things I want to do. Contour is one thing. I have another restaurant called Shawa. Shawa is doing shawarma. Shawarma, and for people in England, for them, shawarma is the kind of thing they eat at three o'clock in the morning when they're drunk after clubs. I don't like that. Like if you go to Lebanon, people eat shawarma all day long. You see young kids eating shawarma. You see families. When I went to Istanbul, and the donor, obviously, in here is different to Istanbul. In Istanbul, it's like a steak. The guy that was cutting the um, donor is like an, an, an artisan. It's like someone, it's like a Picasso. It's like someone at work. He was standing with a strong posture. He was cutting it with so much love and passion. What I want to do, I want to give it, I want to give the image, the recognition it really deserves. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm blushing you looking at me. I'm really, I'm really blushing. Seriously. <laughs> it's for me, it's one of the freshest and the best, healthiest sandwiches you can have. If I compare burger with a shawarma, the bun against the bread, our bread is very thin bread, freshly made, is healthier. Minced meat with a lot of fat, for us, it's pure breast of chicken or shoulder of lamb with fresh salad. So maybe I'm biased, maybe because I'm proud, but I think shawarma a kebab is healthier than a, a burger. If someone here listens to my story, they think it's easy, it wasn't easy. In fact, after my father passed away, I was told that the, day, the night I came, I, I was coming to London, my father was crying all night. He couldn't accept leaving his, uh, his oldest son. Even if he told me then, I wouldn't understand. But now with time, I think I understand the sacrifice we make to leave uh, our family behind. Now everything comes back. In fact, up to today, when my father passed away 20 years ago. I still, have, he's still my motivation. I always think of them before. Whenever I think it's hard, whatever I do, I just think of them. They're part of my motivation. Each of us that comes to this country has a responsibility to represent their culture. But for me also, I feel like I'm, I'm the ambassador of my culture to be able to showcase the beautiful colors, the beautiful smells, the beautiful history and tradition, and the generous hospitality of our, of our culture.